So let's look at using microflows. Now microflows are a way for us to actually um, sequence a series of activities, uh, make something happen, have some kind of action or process occur. And um, in traditional programming languages, the way that you would do that is by writing programming code, which looks sort of like English, lines of English code. But in um, these sort of no code, low code environments, creating these kind of activities is done graphically. And Mendix describes these things as being microflows. Well, there are microflows and there are nanoflows, but I'm going to focus in on microflows in this session. So the best way to actually do this is to actually create a microflow. So let's have a look at our um, EMP department grade app. So I'm just going to run it here. So we've got employees. And if we go into a particular employee, we can see obviously some employees are in particular departments. This person is in department one. So let's add a little button sort of around here. And if you click on the button, what it will do is it will show the department details for the department that this person is actually inside. So if they were in department one, you'd be able to sort of click on the button and what it will do is it will show the page which contains information, the department page for department one. That's the basic plan. So let's go back into our app. So here's my um, add edit employee page. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to sort of place a button over here. Now to do that, I'm going to need to um, change the layout of the page. So I'm going to let's add a layout grid in. Here we go. I'm just going to pop it above there. And let's pick 9.3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place, I'm just going to grab the pre-existing department input field and drop it in that bit on the left. And then that leaves me with a little button, a space for the button on the right. Now I know the layout's not very good here and um, if we were focusing on design and styling and all that kind of stuff then I could spend some time on making it look nice but I'm not worried about that. I want to just get into demonstrating a microflow. So I'm not too worried there. Let's focus on this bit. So if I scroll down to where the buttons are we should be able to see one that says call microflow. So what I can do is I can drag that, I can drop it on here and it will say what microflow should run when this button is clicked. Now, currently, of course, I don't have any microflows. If there was a microflow that I wanted to use at this point, it would be in this list and I could simply select it. But I don't have one. So I'm going to tap on the new button. And it will say, what, um, what's the name of this microflow going to be? So I'm going to give it a, a name. Let's call it show department. I click on OK. Now what this will do is it will create the button and you can see it's got a default generated text on the front of the button that says show department. And in the column over here, you can see we've now got a new micro flow. Now a micro flow is indicated by a little circle with a triangle in it. So it's created the micro flow. A micro flow doesn't actually do anything, but what will happen here is if we click on that button, it will run that micro flow. As I said, at the moment that microflow won't do anything at all, but we've got the bones of this thing in place. So let's go into edit mode for microflows. So I'm going to double tap on this. And here we are. This is the microflow editing page. Now you notice that uh, in the toolbox, we've got a whole list of things that you can do inside a microflow. And we're going to be using some of these today. All sorts of things open pages, close pages, change values, change objects, all sorts of stuff. But let's look at the main panel for the microflow. Here it is. Now, if we look at the elements that are on the left, basically the green circle indicates the sort of starting point for the microflow. The microflow will start running from here and the process will travel along this line until we get to the red circle and the red circle sort of indicates the termination point for the microflow. So any everything we want to happen has to sort of occur on this line. This will be our starting point, the green circle. This will be the point where the microflow finishes, the red circle. 
Now this shape here, which says employee, sometimes what, we'll, what we will want our microflows to do is to work with some data. And um, mostly we'll have some kind of data flowing into the microflow for the microflow to do its work. And that's what this is indicating here. Now, Mendix has automatically determined that the kind of information that's going to be flowing in here is going to be an employee. So let's have a think about what, what's going on here. This is all to do with context. Because I place the call microflow button inside this data container, inside this data view, basically this view will be displaying an employee. So now you can visualize that. Remember, you can visualize that as being a row from the emp table. So it's a person. Uh, Mendix, of course, talks about that as it, and it uses the name object, but you can visualize it as being a row of the table. So back into my Mendix, uh, my microflow. So when that button is clicked, we'll be actually sort of viewing an employee. And what Mendix has done here is it's gone, ah, oh, okay. It's sort of made this assumption, oh, you want to actually use that employee in your microflow. And so that's what this symbol over here means. It basically means that row, that object, is going to flow into the microflow and we can work with it inside the microflow. Now, um, that's the one that's sort of appeared by default. If it happens to not be the one that you want, what you can do is you can um, say that you want a different parameter and you can drag these things in from the toolbox. So, for example, let me just demonstrate this. Say I delete this thing here. So here's a completely empty microflow. I could go, okay, I want, a, when this microflow runs, it's gonna have a parameter, that's called a parameter, the data that's gonna come in. You can see it says not set. It says, what kind of thing will it be that's gonna be coming in? And I could say, it's going to be an employee. There we go, like that. So, um, because of the way that I created this microflow, it automatically created that for me. If it's not there, or if it's a different kind of object, what you can do is you can drag this parameter widget onto here, and that sort of indicates an employee will be flowing into this microflow for it to do its work. Okay, let's get into the nuts and bolts of actually creating some more of this microflow then. So, Let's have a think about what we want to do. We want to, uh, when you press the button, you're going to be looking at an employee, and it might be like an employee who's in department one. We want to find the details for department one and then show that in the sort of view department page. Now, we've already got a view department page, so that's, that's not a problem there. Um, so, what we need to do, let's go, let's think about that again. I'm going to say it again. We need to get the department details for whatever the department number that we're actually viewing at that point. So if it's Fred who's in department one, we need to get the department one details. So what we need to do is we need to retrieve, that's called a retrieve, retrieve the object, retrieve the department row that's the right row. So. If you have a look over here under object activities, you'll see there's one there that says retrieve. Now, if I drag that, what I'll do is I place it on the line to indicate this is going to be the first thing that happens. There it is. Now, you've got the little red circle here, and this is sort of indicating that we need to configure this uh, little widget on the microflow. So I'm going to double tap on it. Here we go. And it says, what kind of object do you want to retrieve? Now, either we could just retrieve some item, some object from a database. And if I selected database, I could change all that. But um, I'm going to leave it as by association because what we're really doing is we really want to retrieve the department for the employee object that's being displayed at this point. 
So uh, if you remember, we said there was an association between employee and department when we created the domain model. So I'm going to select the association. So up here, you'll see an entry for employee. And if I open that up, you'll see it says employee has an association, a connection to the employee department table. And in fact, it's actually called employee department, that association, that relationship. So I can just select that and click OK and click OK. And there that's done. What that will do is that will and it, you can see it says it says retrieve the department from that association. So the microflow will start. It's going to take the, the employee that's currently being displayed and it will use that to actually retrieve the appropriate department object. So if it's Fred who's in department one, we will retrieve all of the information about department one. Now we need to do something. We need to do the next thing. We've got that object. We've got that bit of data. What do we actually want to do next? Well, we want to show a page. So if you look under client activities, we've got show a page. And what I can do is I can drag that up there and I can drop it on the line. Obviously, I'm going to drop it after the retrieve bit. Again, I get a little red circle here, which is sort of indicating to me I need to finish configuring it. Clearly, what I need to do here is say, what page should I display? So let's go into here. I can click select. Now, the name of the page that we use to actually show a department is this one here. Add, ed, um, add edit departments. Select. And now I can go OK. So what will happen is this will run. It will find the department object and then it will pass that department object into the show add edit departments page. And then it will finish. OK, let's save it all. Let's recreate the app and let's see what happens when we run it. And let's view the app. Click on here. Go into one of the employees. We can see that March is in department one. Let's click on show department. It shows department one. Let's go back. If we click cancel, let's say we go into burn. Burn is in department two. Let's click on show department. We get the information for department two, just like that. So you can see that's our microflow to show a department.